Nearly 7% of India's budget is for this one welfare program and it touches over 160 million households or 16 crore families. Several times the total budget and the total population of many countries. That's the scale of the program to give rations on subsidized prices to people in need. It's known as the Public Distribution System or PDS. In some areas, up to 50% of the rations go unclaimed, mainly because people are unable to access it. These people are typically tied to one fair price shop or FPS agent and that gives monopoly power to the agent. Governments in Telangana and elsewhere have tried breaking this monopoly by allowing beneficiaries to go to any FPS within the state. It's called portability in PDS. Yet, there's not enough research that focuses on understanding and improving their operations. The researchers are keen to bridge this gap with their body of work. Two of the researchers are with us, one an ISB professor, the other a PhD scholar and an alum of the school to break it down. So traditionally, the PDS, PDS suppliers were delivered to the beneficiaries through a fixed agent. That is, the government used to send the grains to a certain agent. The agent is responsible for stocking the grain and the beneficiary would come to the agent, establish his or her identity and the agent would supply the grain to the beneficiary. So what portability promises is that now the beneficiary has the choice of which agent to go and collect the grains from. So this choice is expected to break the monopoly of the agents and ensure that agents compete with each other and also empower beneficiaries to, to overcome the monopoly power which agents earlier had. We know that FPS agents in uh, areas tend to be the ones that are uh, in some sense wield a lot of influence. The amount of authority or amount of uh, power they wield over beneficiaries who are from an economically backward uh, strata means that even if let's say I had three or four different FPSs that I could possibly go to which are close by, it is not clear that FPS agents may necessarily serve beneficiaries who were not otherwise assigned to them on paper. So the government's intention was to introduce was to introduce competition between the agents. But if we really think about it from first principles, we didn't really find a way in which an agent would compete. So a classic 4P framework that we teach in business school, if we were to use it, price is fixed by the government. It's one or two rupees per kilo of rice. Product is fixed by the government. It is the rice which is shipped literally shipped to the FPS agent. So all agents have the same products. So promotion, we haven't, at least in our field visits, we haven't really seen agents doing any kind of promotion as to, hey, please come take the grain from our, uh, our shop. And the fourth is place. So place again, like I said, the government fixes the place. There is one agent for every thousand beneficiaries. So agent doesn't really have much to offer in terms of why a beneficiary should come and collect a grain from this from me and not from another person. Technology in this case, linking the ration card with Aadhaar, makes it possible to allow portability or choice of shop. Research by Professor Shripad and Rakesh, along with Professor Sarang Deo from ISB and Maya Ganesh from IIM Ahmedabad, spotlights the need to also study how citizens will actually engage with it. To study this in the specific context of PDS, they compared Telangana with neighbouring Andhra Pradesh. While Andhra had got shop choice or portability in 2015, Telangana got it in 2018. But what would that mean in simpler numbers for a family's monthly budget? So the research question we asked is, does portability have any welfare impact, number one? And number two, if it does, why does it have it? Like we said, we don't really see a competitive lever. So if it does, the line of curiosity was, why does it have it? And we were thinking about it, we were, we were twiddling with some numbers from different states, and we ran into a situation where the neighboring state, which looks more or less similar to Telangana, introduced portability in 2015. So we observed data from 2015 to 2019, and in the middle of, the, in the middle of our analysis time period, Telangana got portability. So all we did is we computed two differences. So one difference is what's the difference between uptake of grains in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh after introduction of portability? The other is what's the difference before the introduction of portability? 
So if you take the difference of these two differences, one could causally say that the difference is because of portability. And what we see is that because of portability, Telangana uptake of grains in Telangana increased by 6.6%. And what that means at a sub-district level is 810 additional households who were not collecting grains before the introduction of portability are now collecting grains. And for each household, what this means is a cost save of 600 to 700 rupees. Assuming that if they had not collected the grain from the program, they would have gone to the market and collected the same amount of grain. And if one were to kind of take these numbers, which are at a sub-district level, which was our unit of analysis, a sub-district month, and if one were to just do a rough extrapolation to the entire state of Telangana, this would result in about 600,000 more households now taking their uh, benefits from PDS compared to before. So these are 600,000 new additional households. I wouldn't say new because these were always eligible, but for various reasons weren't uh, availing of their benefits, are now availing their benefits. More people were now getting the benefits, that's for sure. But were these additional beneficiaries even going to different agents now that they had the choice? Well, this is where the magic of competition kicked in. What we very interestingly found is, at least in Telangana, most of this increase, or almost all of this increase in uh, 800 households per sub-district now collecting their entitlements, were all households that were collecting it from their pre-assigned FPS. So it's not that they were now going to a different FPS than they were earlier allotted to. They were going back to the same uh, FPS. So in that sense, that was completely unexpected uh, because one would think of the same mechanism, right? Again choice, I would go to a different FPS, I would get my grains, but surprisingly, it was the exact opposite of what we set out uh, assuming would be uh, what we would find. And what we found is that choice might be acting as a threatening mechanism for the agents to be better behaved. And the evidence for that, we, the evidence that we find in our data is that after the introduction of portability, agents keep their shop open for longer number of days in a month. So traditionally, the standard operating procedure from the government is that the agent has to keep the shop open for 15 days. And most agents do not do that. So after the introduction of portability, we see agents more likely to keep the shop open for 15 days. And our thinking is that because the agents are now open for longer duration of time, the 6.6% 6 .6 additional beneficiaries who are now collecting grains are able to access their own agents better because of choice. Clearly, choice of shop for PDS beneficiaries works. That's established in Telangana. But beyond this study, we asked the researchers what needs to be done to take this idea national. For instance, planning the stocking and restocking of rations will become further complicated. And that's just one of the challenges to the idea of one nation, one ration card. So, the one nation, one ration card program that the government has announced for PDS essentially is that now beneficiaries in any part of India can go to any FPS within the country to avail their benefits. And so in that sense, it is of a much broader scope than the context which we studied in Telangana, where the government of Telangana had allowed beneficiaries within Telangana to be able to go to any FPS within Telangana. So they still couldn't go to an FPS, say, in AP or Maharashtra to get their grains. What One Nation, One Ration Card does is remove those barriers as well. One more point with One, Ration, one Nation, One Ration Card is that PDS is both a central and a state subject. So what a beneficiary from Bihar gets in his or her state is very different from what a beneficiary gets in Andhra. So when somebody migrates from Punjab to Andhra, what is this beneficiary entitled to is something which requires policy clarification. And who's going to bear the cost, right? Because if it's something that's jointly administered by both central and state governments, there's a cost implication, a budgetary implication for the two entities. And it's not clear who ends up having to uh, incur this cost. And there again, you can expect possible frictions between central governments and state governments. That is for India and for PDS. But the study establishes a pivotal point about how seemingly simple tweaks can have massive impact on people's lives in large-scale welfare programs. And that clearly goes beyond one commodity, one scheme, one country. 
So PDS is not the only commodity transfer program in the world. So across the world, low and middle income countries spend about 3 to 5% of their GDP on these programs which involve transfer of commodities. So when I say transfer of commodities, examples include rice, which is the case of PDS, fertilizers, which India also runs, cooking gas, which India used to run, and which Indonesia runs even today. Fertilizers is run by Nigeria and health and hygiene products, which a lot of African countries run. So in the modality of transfer in all these programs is that the beneficiaries tie to one agent who will supply these uh, government subsidized commodity, commodities to them. So one insight that can be drawn from our paper to these programs is that introduce choice. And if you introduce choice, it might act as a threatening mechanism and agents might be better behaved and ensure that these commodities actually reach the beneficiary. So in that sense, I guess if one had to summarize the key takeaway in a line or so, just the introduction of choice and not necessarily the use of choice itself is enough to improve things. And to that extent, there are uh, other governments can look at what what our findings are and see how well they might translate to their settings and therefore try and do something like that.